Hey, how are you, Andy? How's it going? I hope you can hear me well. Yeah, it works well. I can hear you. Is it clear? Background. Yeah, background is, uh, yeah, yeah, if you can lower it a little bit because it's cutting off right at your, yeah, there well, you go. Yeah, well, I try, well, to, I... try to find a way that it looks slimmer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I think my colleagues um, found something that we're going to have some for. Um, there we go. see if I can elevate this. Sure, no problem. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, perfect. So I think, um, I don't know. Is there? There's other folks on the call already, or or is Simon? Uh, any? Yeah. yeah. Simon worked with, uh, worked with me and Arta. Yeah. Okay, and AW yeah. and Zaf as well, or yeah. oh, hey, hey, other. Simon. Don't know who's the other. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Got it. I'm just reached on and then sorry. Yeah. Hmm. I was reached off myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good stuff. Yeah. And Zaf is also Arta as well. No. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Um, let me see. Yeah, because no. Yeah. Hey, 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 Julie. <coughs> Hi, Neil. Hi, Eddie. Hi. Yeah, people are. Yeah. Yeah, people are coming in already. Yeah. I love your background, Julie. Julie, is it um, it's a virtual background. PwC. It's definitely a virtual. Yeah, I'm not in the office at the moment, but I don't even yeah. think this is this is not the Hong Kong office though. It's somebody else's, some other office around the country that has a really cool wall. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why. That's why. It's cool. That's why it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they have a lot of uh, pretty cool places, right? You guys have like an innovation center in Shanghai and all this other stuff, right? Yeah, we do. We do. And in Singapore, we got a really nice plot. Yeah, we've been slowly <laughs> upgrading. But in but in Hong Kong, true, uh, yeah, Hong Kong style, it's like, no, we need just the office in Central. We just need an address that's in Central. And then we're gonna, not going to do anything <laughs> it's, else. It's, it's so expensive in Hong Kong. <laughs> I know, we just need to maintain it, you know. Yeah. Let me record the video as well. Just... No, just checking. Oh, we had a couple of people drop off just now. Yeah. Yeah, because I... Um... Yeah, basically, I think there are some people that were, well, I think they accidentally took out one of your colleagues. But um, yeah, so what I was I was going to do is just kind of like a quick run through because um, Justin ended up taking the people that were coming in and put them back into the waiting room. Um, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> just to kind of reset. But um, yeah, so Julie, do you, how do you, uh, how should we um, you want to kick it off and then we can do, um, you know, alternate on the questions or however you want to do it. I don't mind. You can, you, I will take your lead because mm -hmm. you're, it's your session, Neil, but I'm happy to, yeah, you, you let me know what you prefer. Okay. Yeah. Cause I think it's just, uh, along those lines of the, the, you know, the previous agenda. So I think, you know, what we could do 
do is you can kick it off. I'll ask him about uh, Chan, what's the background of Tuck? And then you can come in and say, you know, what's the, what's the really the strategy for growth? You know, that type of thing. Like basically the same, I think that flow, if that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Is it me or were you breaking up a little bit? I'm just wondering if it's my connection. I, I think Neil is breaking up. Ah, okay. Yeah. I think my, my internet connection should be good. I, I hope it's good. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it was just you a bit, Neil, there. No, that's fine. Okay, yeah. I mean, do you want to do the the intro, Neil? Uh, no, uh, if you want to do the intro stuff, and then and then I'll ask the uh, back the introduction, and then you can go into, you know, strategy for growth. Oh, you want me to do the intro of welcome to Wealth Tech Committee, the usual? Oh, you're frozen, Neil. Neil, you're frozen. We can see two me now. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Is that better? Oh, no. Yeah, that's better. Hopefully, <laughs> your connection will stay there. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> let me. Um, I'll tell you what. Let me. Let me do what we used to do. Let me do the intro. Welcome people to the FinTech Association Wealth Tech Committee. Um, okay. And then I will just introduce the. I guess yeah. We have a fireside chat. Um, today, very excited, and then I'll just hand over to you, Neil, to maybe introduce Eddie. You want to okay. do that? Yeah. Cool. Wasn't like yeah. you can, um, and then yeah, then Eddie can you can introduce yourself, and then yeah, mm. then we'll ask the questions. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. I'll just if I don't say up front in my one that like people feel free to just put you know Six. put questions on the chat, and then mm. or you can just reiterate that or say that if I don't say that just try to make it yeah an interactive session yeah mm -hmm. we, we should make it fun um yeah otherwise yeah. I don't think anyone can last more than an hour maybe not even 20 minutes <laughs> to make it fun and chill it's actually sad it's, it's in 6 p.m right you know it'll be ideal to have a beer and chat it over a real fire chat you know um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm having coffee weird. just to make sure that I, I stay awake <laughs> <laughs> you're having coffee at six o'clock no, I'm, 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 <laughs> you must have had a rough day no already. uh yeah i started early and then i'm hoping that i can finish before uh midnight tonight wow <laughs> pretty crazy those are things going on which is good i mean um quite can't share everything in the growth strategy but there's so much there's so many good opportunities out there um mm. it feels like um you know i feel like back in like you know, college day when I was looking for jobs and and then uh, interning at uh, UBS and you were like you have to work hard and um, you know learn new things. It was it was that kind of feeling. Yeah, there's a, there's a certain kind of energy right now, right? I mean, yeah. it's like it's really happening inside of the sector, and it's like you know you're kind of in the center of the storm. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, <laughs> except except the drinking part is not that because people. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> that comes in time you know it's a uh, yeah. bull market uh you know that type of situation right now so let's see i think justin is on as well um but yeah so i think uh, if we if we follow that format that's fine um no problem mm -hmm. and then we can proceed from there uh but yeah substantially the same i mean i think what we will probably um cover on the back end as far as NFTs and then some of the metaverse and then the China slash uh, GBA discussion mm -hmm. and then go from there, I think. Yeah. Um, what we could probably do uh, in the at the outset is just say, you know, if you got questions, you could drop it right into the chat yeah. and we can throw, you know, like your suggestion is we can throw them in as we go along. Uh, as long as it doesn't kind of like take us off the, the rails or anything like that, mm -hmm. like it's relevant to that section, if you will. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take a cough medicine right now. Um, <laughs> I have allergy too, so I'm coughing a bit. Yeah. I'm take a little bit you, of this stuff. You sound better though, Neil. Like you're not coughing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eddie, I don't know if you ever took this when you were in Chicago. This uh, Vix. 
Yeah, I did. <laughs> I got my call from from the cold weather in Chicago. So yeah. I moved from Hong Kong to Chicago, and, and that was that's how the whole thing happened. It was too cold for me. Wait, you spread COVID? <laughs> no, it was. You were was the super spreader. <laughs> yeah. All right. Shall we right. let Justin um, let let people in? in? And then, yeah. yeah. And then, hey, Justin, thanks. Great. Welcome, everyone. We're joining the Wealth Tech Committee meeting for April 2022. Um, thanks for being on time. Um, if you don't mind, we'll just give another sort of 30 seconds, one minute or so, just for some of our latecomers, and then we'll get started. All right, I think we've given enough time. Hopefully, I'm sure more people will join. Mm. All right, so welcome again, everybody. Uh, it's uh, April Wealth Tech Committee meeting. Um, Neil and I have a very exciting uh, agenda today. Actually, we 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 will uh, we will introduce our our key uh, speaker for today. Um, I guess just a refresh for some of you. Some of you, I can see some familiar names. So great to see you mm. back again. Um, and hopefully, we've got some new some new people joining. Um, Wealth Tech Committee, for those of you who are not familiar, we're part of obviously the fin Hong Kong FinTech Association. We have quite a broad um, member base. You know, we have representatives from you know, private banks, asset managers, financial institutions. We also have many sort of Wealth Tech solution providers. And then we have many from other professional industry um, in, here in Hong Kong. So it's great to see um, you all again. Um, we have been running a few topics, sort of, let's say, digital assets related, actually often give us the biggest draw <laughs> for participation, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, but we also, I think our sweet spot from a Wealth Tech Committee perspective is also trying to bridge that to some mm -hmm. of the traditional financial institutions. Um, and so fast forward, I guess now, I guess to today's topic, um, and we have a, a fireside chat uh, today, um, and we wanted to focus um, on, on Arthur Techfin. Um, so I'll, I'll let Neil, my co-chair, uh, introduce, I guess, yeah, the topic uh, and also introduce our guest speaker, Eddie. Over to you, Neil. Great, thanks a lot, Julie. So as uh, Julie mentioned, I'm the co-chair of the uh, Well Tech Committee. Uh, today's a little bit of a different format. Uh, typically what we do on these monthly meetings is we have these different panels on um, you know key topics. We've done everything from crypto to robo advisors to GBA and so on and so forth. So today is a little bit of a different format with a fireside chat. So it's a little bit more personal. Uh, please feel free to drop uh, messages into the chat uh, so that you know we'll, we'll uh, come back to those as we go through the session. Um, today we have a really special guest, uh, Eddie Lau, who's the CEO for Arta Techfin. Um, essentially, um, you know, fantastic experience. Not to mention the fact that he is also from Chicago. Uh, but I'll I'll hand it over to Eddie to kind of give an introduction about himself as well as uh, uh, Arta Techfin. Uh, so over to Eddie. Well, thank you, Judy and uh, Neil. Um, 
So um, actually, one thing I can promise you today is uh, we should make this fun. You know, I was thinking, hoping that we can actually come out and uh, have a have a glass of beer and a, a pound of beer and a glass of wine and uh, do the fire, a real fire chat. But obviously, it's not happening okay. soon in Hong Kong. So um, so if you guys will be drinking, we we totally understand uh, and you should. So um, I'm Eddie, um, CEO of Alta Teffin. Um, Alta Teffin is is a is a tapping company. It's not it, it, you can tell, but what tapping means is um. It could be quite bored. So what we do is um, we, we actually do traditional finance and also do people like to call it digital finance, virtual asset finance, crypto finance, whatever you like to call it. Um, we, we, we actually will do those. And obviously to do those, you have to have license and that would be a big argument points. You know, I think half of the population here will say, no, come on, you don't need a license to, to trade cryptos. Uh, that will be one topic today. And uh, we'd love to have you guys, um, you know, um, asking questions or throwing us um, you know your, your views even um and uh so that we can make it fun today for sure uh, and interactive um i myself I, I grew up in hong kong actually um went to chicago because i i kind of thought, actually I, I i watched too much mba when i was young uh, michael <laughs> jordan was cool <laughs> and then I, I read economic books and th there seems to be two things that matters in chicago and mba uh chicago blue and uh universal chicago economics um, I couldn't get into the basketball team, so um, I went got into the University of Chicago instead. So, <laughs> and, um, and I was an econ student, and, and for the last 20 years, um, uh, before I actually really took on a full-time technology role um, at Arta, I was um, I started out as a derivative trader, and then uh, hedge fund hedge fund managers, and then uh, not only managers. Uh, I work in New York, uh, Beijing, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, London, um, and and then. But now back to Hong Kong uh, into technology. So um, that will be hopefully something that we we'll all do it together um, in the next 10 years, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a lot of, uh, you know, we were just talking before the call started. I mean, there's so much buzz inside of the markets, uh, you know, talking about digital assets, talking about crypto, all these yeah. different areas. Um, yeah. What's really Arta's, you know, strategy for growth or, Actually, what's really interesting is how Arta was kind of put together. Um, if you can tell the story about how, um, you know, mm. Adrian and yourself kind of worked out that mm. deal. Uh, that I think that's a little bit of an interesting background for the, for the people mm. on the phone. Yeah, oh. sure. Well, um, full credit to Adrian. Um, he's our chairman. In fact, the whole idea came around when Adrian um, was, um, came across this opportunity to save a distressed company. And it's actually an old company. It was born in 1988. I'm slightly older than the company. Uh, I was born in 1980. We're both uh, millennials. Um, the, the company changed hands six times um, until the last, you know, the last, the last, the last owner was also um, not running it properly or um, in, in the way they should. And then um, the company went into liquidations, um, which is unfortunate. So the stock was suspended, and then Adrian came in as a white knight. Uh, by white knight, it means you 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 restructure the company, you save the company, and then you you want to make sure that it's resume trading again. So thanks to um, the Hong Kong Exchange, SFC, and you know, all the regulatory body, including the high courts, um, insurance authority, we went through all of them because we own um, quite a lot of licenses in Hong Kong. We have SFC Taiwan, two, uh, four, six, nine, um, and then we have insurance brokerage license, trustee license, uh, money lending license, Hong Kong Exchange participant right. So we can trade on the exchange and clear Hong Kong stocks and futures. Uh, we have other seats as well in, in elsewhere. Um, so then to, to make sure that we resume trading, uh, we have to be sustainable and, and viable. So um, so that's what we did last year, pretty much. And, and thanks to Adrian um, supporting the whole, whole initiative. Um, so I was CEO for, for the restructure company so that we can go into restructure. Uh, and then we resumed trading last year in November. It was great. I mean, November, when November is as I finally resumed trading and we can get on to real businesses, so we have to continue our traditional business as we should. And then knew you were asking, hey, what's, what, what do you see growth? You know, where we see growth is actually um, exactly how we think about this. Um, I guess every day, I mean, do, I mean, you guys probably have a lot of cryptos and probably a billionaire or millionaires or, you know, at least <coughs> worth a lot of money in your crypto, but you probably still would still struggle to go down for a um, one to noodles with your Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so that means you actually need some fiat in your life, and um and you need you probably want to buy some stocks and bonds and funds and and you know keep some cash. So that's why we see 
the disconnect between the DeFi world and the TriFi, or oh, I like to call it CFI really. CFI is a more generic term. So the TriFi or the crypto, crypto CFI, um, people like to distinguish them. I, I think they're both CFI in a way, um, CFI and DeFi. So meaning the DeFi guy can't really get one to new though. Um, the, the CFI guy can't really um, enjoy the, 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 the joy of Web3 and all this cryptocurrency and stacking and deal farming. Um, mm. It shouldn't be that way, right? You know, the world should be better. So can we combine the two? Can we take the best of both? Um, can we make it safe and regulated? At the same time, can we make it fun and immersive? Uh, we think so. So that's where we see opportunity. We actually came up with a name. I hope that all of you guys would like the name. Please don't copy it. Because uh, we came up with the name. Uh, we haven't registered or patented it. Uh, we, like, <laughs> we like to call it the best of CFI and, high, and, 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 and DeFi. And we combine the two. We call it hybrid finance. Hybrid finance, hi-fi. We, we just like the old hi-fi. You know, the old hi-fi thing that when I was young, when I was listening to music, um, it was called hi, um, high fidelity um, music, basically, or or, or two oaks, basically. So um, so we we call it the same hi-fi. So hybrid finance is where we see um, a perpetual growth. In fact, we think hybrid finance will 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 potentially be as competitive or even marginalized as DeFi. Um, we can get into the detail later on, but that's where we see growth. And then we also want to see people using cryptos. Um, yeah. Some people the CBDC, the government will call it CBDC. The ones ECNY and EHKD, we welcome that as well. We're part of that effort. The crypto native who want, to do, want us to use Bitcoin, Ethereum, or even the altcoins, uh, right. we're part of the effort as well. But everything we do has to be regulated. Everything we do has to be licensed. And again, I'm sure that would generate a lot of interest in, in discussion. So we welcome comments, we welcome discussions and after a heated discussion, we can all go out for a drink later to make it up. Um, and then, um, um, and then, so, so that's the kind of the, where we see opportunity. If you can go within the regulatory framework and make it fun, make it inclusive, then it should be a good business. And so to, to encourage people to, to adopt crypto or digital currencies, uh, we first of all have to know what they want. So we have four types of clients basically, and each of them are quite unique. So the the, the, um, the crypto native folks will be like, mm, yeah. In, in fact, I do want to go to go for dim sum and run to noodles, and they still, they, and then I want to buy some stock. So, so Eddie, can you help? I like, sure, absolutely. We have all the licenses. That's not brand new butter. On the other hand, people with too much stocks and say, damn it, I, I miss out the whole crypto rally. Um, I want to be in. Yeah, sure. Here we go. We're here to help. Um, and then the corporate, who are like, mm, it seems like we are late too. Um, can we create a blockchain um, process for our business where the world can understand our process better so that we can actually conduct even financing activity on, on blockchain. So blockchain financing, obviously the first, first, first criteria is that the project itself has to be on blockchain. Um, these are private chain, permission chain. Um, they're not open Ethereum chain. They're not public chain, so all private chain. And, and then you can have money matching demands. You can have you know, capital provider matching um, you know, uh, basically uh, capital need, um, construction and healthcare is the, the two areas that we're already working on. Uh, hopefully we can roll out something in the summer. Um, the fourth type um, is funds manager, financial businesses. They're like, funny enough, actually I was a trader when I was, when I was young. I look at all these DeFi, um, you know, products, financial products. They are in a way similar to what we used to do when I was in banks. Um, except that banks have some crazier products. Um, but now everyone has moved on from the financial crisis in, in 2008, uh, the Lehman crisis, and then collapse of all these OTC exchanges or OTC other banks, then there's an increasing capital requirement of more regulation around it as well. Um, mm. So when I was working in Merrill Lynch, we were, <coughs> the banks stopped having uh, vocal rules because they didn't want the banks to fail. I think, in a way, the fund manager feel the same way. Am I facing the right kind of party if I'm facing the DeFi guy uh, versus the DeFi guy? But the DeFi guy can't give me cryptos. You know, so where are we going? Can we have an exchange or can we have an institution where we can trade the DeFi stuff but have the DeFi none of it? So the fourth type is actually where we think with regulations and with changing law and Hong Kong is, in, is a place and UK actually announced a lot uh, a friend of mine sent um, a, a wonderful article to me tonight, today about the UK um, being the global hub of financial digital asset or digital industry. Mm -hmm. 
Hong Kong was making the same statement. I'm sure Singapore will make the same statement and even, you know, yeah. Dubai. You know, <laughs> Dubai. I'm <laughs> sure even eventually Panama and Mexican City will do the same. Everyone wants to be in this digital um, space. So they're push, pushing out regulations. Uh, mm. So that's the fourth type of cons that as regulations uh, become clearer, the adoption become easier. Mm. Right. So they, they're all cool and they're all our clients. Um, and I guess I will stop here first and, and, and see what, where we should go. Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's try to, I mean, that's, that's uh, a lot of different initiatives that you're working on at, all mm. at the same time. And a lot of the things are in tandem, right? So mm. if we kind of unpack a little bit, uh, you know, inside of uh, CBDC is also stable coins. You know, China is super aggressive inside of this area. Um, mm. You know, I think they have somewhere around 80 different projects that are going on inside of CBDC's uh, internationalization of the ERMB and so forth. Um, even inside of Hong Kong, I think there's like 75, 80 different projects as well hmm. uh, on Hong Kong dollar as well. Hmm. Um, at the same time, then you've got the stable coin situation, right? So I think stable coins are about $180 billion uh, total market value. Um, some people are saying Tether is a short opportunity. I mean, people are thinking like this is, uh, you know, George Soros, UK pound situation right now. <laughs> um, what's your view on this area? And how do you, how do you guys, uh, how does Arda play inside of this space, you know? Yeah, interesting. Um, well, the stable cons, let's go to the stable. Again, we're not offering any investment advisor. We're not licensed to do so. Um, just casual five, five sorry. I mean, we need, we need, we need a five chat here um, and a few drinks. So um, I think stable cons, I mean, if, if stable cons is transparent enough, I think then it will be a true stable cons. The idea of Web3 or the idea of blockchain is to make sure that everything's transparent. So if, you're under, if, if you take my dollar, put it into somewhere else, but I don't know what you have put in, I mean, shouldn't those information be on some sort of blockchain where everyone can see it and track it? Um, I think USDT, were um, questions um, for the basic, you know, do you have the right discipline to buy the right thing? Would you end up buying Chinese property bonds? That won't end too well, you know. Uh, maybe if they buy now, they will end really well. But, you know, yeah, but that wasn't the business of USDC or USDT or any stable coins. Mm. Um, actually, I think the, the, the stock story situation was the depacking, um, I mean, as, as Neil was referring to. Um, and I actually thought about the situation, which is closer to um, not depacking actually. Um, it's closer to um, the Lehman crisis. So I keep going back to Lehman crisis. So I started working in 2001. The first crisis was the internet crisis. It was, it was bad. But um, the, 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 the financial crisis in Norway was really bad because even mutual funds, money market funds were trading below the buck. They could below the buck, below $1. So if you give me a dollar, I'm a money, money market manager. I'm supposed to give you a dollar back plus something. I mean, the worst case, I don't give you something. There's no interest. Right. And during the crisis, I can't even give you a buck. Right. How bad it was. Um, if it become a loan for a stable calm, then it will be quite bad. Regulation mm. will come, and regulation is coming. So you see, SDC is actually starting out with stable cons. Um, I myself think it's a good, it's good, it's a good move. I mean, it doesn't hurt, right? If you can show your portfolio, again, put it on blockchain so everyone can see it. It helps everyone. Yeah, uh, I think uh, that's definitely true. I mean, the regulatory is coming down on the states. It's coming down um, pretty much on a global basis, but it's in bits and pieces and at different phases at this point. How about on the CBDC side? I mean, how do you see Arta participating in the ERMB and the HKD, um, that particular area? Yeah, well, thanks for asking that question. Obviously, we're in Hong Kong, so in, in, in uh, oh, well, we'll obviously we'll use do um, US dollar Sometimes actually for more for payment, but Hong Kong dollar mostly, and then um, um, and then CMY and CNH sometimes. Interestingly, the, the Chinese government really want to push it to to the world, and we're part of that effort to to make it happen. So, eCMY, e Hong Kong D, EHKD are the two major tokens or CBDC that we will be focusing on. I mean, I'm actually, well, given the listing rule, I, I can't comment too much on what we would do um, at this stage. So um, <laughs> it's interesting. So once we announce, we can talk about it. But uh, before we announce, we can't talk about it. So yeah. we haven't announced, so we can't talk about it too much. Uh, and I appreciate your understanding. But um, the direction is clear. It takes 
two to tango usually in this case three i don't know how you have done you know it's like there's uh, three parties dancing together to make a dance work um the first thing is you need <clears throat> a layer one <clears throat> which you have the government doing the layer one e ecmy e e e KG. you can't replicate the layer one you can't do anything about it only they have the right to use currencies a lot of people got very turned off, but if you talk to the long crypto native, they love it. Um, we actually work with a lot of corporates um, on three matters. One is to help them to understand what's blockchain. So um, it's a bit hard to start, but now it's getting better. We have a team to help them. <clears throat> Two is to actually <clears throat> create a process around the business on mm -hmm. blockchain so that key process and key parameters are transparent. And the, the last one is the hardest. Okay, now everything's on blockchain. What do we do with it? I spend money. It's CapEx, my dear Eddie. You know, thanks for asking me to spend money. How am I going to benefit? I said, look, I mean, if you do that and someone else do that, your client does that, if everyone have a wallet, and that's why we're opening a wallet for you. And what's important is what's going to go into the wallet. What are you going to be comfortable about taking on? Mm, cash? I said, no, you can't have, uh, sorry. Well, you can have cash in the Alta wallet uh, because we have traditional license. But in the crypto wallet, you can't really have Hong Kong D, right? You know, can right. you, have, you know, now I say, what is this? An e Hong Kong D. Okay, that's cool. Is e Hong Kong D the same as Hong Kong D or the cash bill that I go, I pay for my taxi, you know? Um, yeah, they're the same. Cool. So, am I going to do my business in EHKD going forward? I say, absolutely. Your buyer is going to pay you EHKD. You're going to have a wallet and um, you, you can pay by credit card, you can pay by EHKD. Um, we can track everything. That's cool. Right. Right. And it matches with my process as well. So I think if you look at the traditional businesses or family offices, um, old money, or people with a lot of money for some reason, they they love the CBDC. They love the CBDC. I don't think the taxi driver in Hong Kong will love it. They just love cash. So there's different preferences for, for different reasons. But if you want people to feel extremely comfortable and adopt crypto, the currency itself has to be something, or the token itself has to be something that they are very used to. Otherwise, they don't want it. So, um, so we, we kind of, we, we, I mean, sometimes when you come up from meeting, I feel very, um, I feel dizzy. I feel bifurcated, you know. It's, you know, um, my mind can't, can't work out because the last meeting was all Bitcoins and Ethereum and, you know, all these, you know, layer two thing and all this cool DeFi stuff. And then the next meeting, Everyone just find it evil, and I say, no, I don't want it. I want CBDC. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next meeting we're back to DeFi. I think I mean, that, that. I mean, that's what we do for um for education as well. But I think the point being, CBDC, when it comes to implementations, um, it will be much faster than what people think. Um, so at the current stage, Hong Kong MA has a Enbridge program. I'm sure platform where a lot of people, a lot of you may, may know about. It. You can actually um operate with EHKD and ECMY. And then Thailand also came on, Thai Bak and also Dubai also came on. So it's a matter of time that you have, <clears throat> you know, like at least a China friendly country to come on mm -hmm. with their currencies and, and then they can they can turn it into a into a E format, in H5 format or token formats. So right. you can actually clear international trade, you can buy oils, you can sell, you know, your metals with with tokens. So why not? Right, right. I mean, you always have that group who want to use it for, for kind of real life. Um, right. And then you always have the crypto folk, folks who, who just hate it. And then I'm going to trade Bitcoin and you forget. Right. Uh, we do both. Where, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, uh, where do you see kind of like this whole, I mean, you were saying it exactly. I mean, there's people that, you know, the minute that you say blockchain, crypto and crypt, you know, decentralized something mm -hmm. or another, people just kind of like, okay, you know, I'm not, I'm not into it, you know? And so how do you balance like, uh, you know, the, the, the light and the dark side, if you will, <laughs> in your role, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's very subjective. Actually, you know, coming into 20 minutes into this conversation, I hope um, we're keeping everyone awake and interested. Um, I think it's a personal judgment whether you're comfortable with with basically the, the tokens, right? The tokenomics and also, you know, how credible it is. You know, I myself, I would prefer um, USDC and USDT to be fully transparent, real time. And hmm. that's what the usual point will give you at least on a daily NAV and constituents on, on you know, what they own. Um, some people don't care, totally don't care. Yeah. And um, I think our job at ATA is to assist all of them to adopt digital currencies in whatever format that they want. 
um, in fact, the adoption would be the key. And, and you know, all these adoptions seems to be finance related, but at Alta, what we thought would be helpful is um, is of handing out free, free BT or, you know, getting you into the lottery and then giving you uh, Amazon shares um, you know, that you can sign up. Um, and in the end, you never win, you know, <laughs> it'll be interesting. It'll be more interesting and long lasting and it will be quite better for you to enjoy the service here and make some money, hopefully you can. And more importantly, um, you wake up every day and you thought of us. And before you brush your teeth and take a shower, you actually will turn on the phone, which everyone does, turn on your phone and go to our apps. So to do that, actually the most natural part is actually NFT, we thought. And mm. I, can, I can share more in details. And the second most, and a community where you can wake up and say, hey, look at me, I care about it because I have some, I have a skin in the game, I have a stick in it and it's fun. So NFT is one, one thing that we, we are exploring, uh, we're building. Uh, it will take some time, so hopefully towards the end of the year, we, we get you out some exciting um, products. Um, I'll go into the NFT detail later on, but I just want to focus on the adoptions and mm -hmm. how, how we actually think about attracting clients to our platform. So adoption part means um, we make sure that everyone we talk to know that sooner or later they need a wallet. Um, it doesn't have to be our wallet, but they, I mean, they can go for Atomos. We're very happy for them. Uh, just that our wallet once we get the licenses, um, we'll enable you to navigate between the DeFi world and CeFi world, meaning help you to have one wallet where you can have all your stocks and bonds and futures and, stock and currencies and cash, and most importantly, your NFT and cryptocurrency. That would help your life, right? You wake up and you go to one wallet rather than 10 different wallets, you know, some for cash, some for funds, and some for cryptos. Um, right. That aside, we hope that you will find it more interesting. I mean, again, I mean, interesting means that you you hopefully can co-create, you can hopefully can uh, put up your products and sell. And obviously that means NFT. And then um, and then um, you hopefully can form a community with your friends or, or your audience. Uh, you can contribute. Even this talk, we should put it in the metaverse later on, NFT marketplace. Sure. And then maybe all the audience can start paying us, you know, and you know, if they like, or uh, they can send up, they can even share the NFT with us, right? Or even this membership thing can, can be on NFT. Um, I think that will make it a true blockchain community, and I think that's the way that the, whether it's blockchain or you know crypto or or you know CBDC or stable coins or not, doesn't matter actually. What matters is this is the way that it goes. That's how we're gonna live our life anyway. So if we create a product that can enable their crypto usage, enable their crypto creations, enable their earnings, again not just from speculations or investings, um, then they will come to you. Right. And they will to work with you. Right. Yeah. Where do you, I mean, do you, do you see the adoption outside of DeFi or where do you see sort of mass adoption on DeFi uh, going, you know, or, or is there a point in time and is there a convergence between the CBDC activities as well as DeFi? I think that, that one is hard. I think CBDC and DeFi will be very hard to find each other. Um, the AML part is the issue. I think so. I guess we can take a step back. You know, DeFi, CFI, what the hell is that? You know, why are the difference? It's really first thing first. When you sign on for the platform, <coughs> when you tell them that you have money, the CFI world wants to know everything about you, including your fingerprint. But the good thing is, if you share your fingerprint, it's actually safer. You get it's, there's less chance that you get hacked on your wallet. And I, I'm actually still not so worried about my HSBC bank account. Uh, when I make a transfer or when I buy a stocks or bonds because the cyber security is actually quite safe so far. I mean, so far so good, thank God. Um, how about crypto wallet? Harder because um, you don't know who you're trading with, but that's the beauty of this too, right? You know, you, you can trade with anyone. So I actually struggle to see how both of them can see eye to eyes. They're just different people speaking different yeah. languages. Um, the, the best one can do, and hopefully we'll be that one, is to, hey, look, I mean, can we compromise a little bit? It's a bit like a married couple, you know, husband and wife, you know, they never okay. see, they don't see eye to eyes and they argue and they have their own values. And then at some point, it's like, okay, we'll do it for the kids, you know, it's okay. We'll, we'll <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, well, it's, everyone take a step back. The DeFi guy accept AML, KYC, and tax, and most important, investor protection. So they, they carry out sort of suitability tests or, or questionnaire, things that we do for, normally in the CFI world, um, at least ask something, you know, don't ask nothing, you know, 
and then right. the, the C five guy, please like give me a break. You know, stopping the intermediary. Um, I don't I don't need a YouTube in between. I don't need a you know a financial institution in between. I don't need a machine in between. I can trade on my own. Mm. I can interact with the communities. So I think if everyone, if both sides move a step closer to each other, that would be the higher prime business model that we're talking about. Mm. And then suddenly the beauty of it is they can live under one household. You know, it's like husband right. and wife in the same room again. You know, right? It's more of a, like, a gap closure, right? I mean, it's like yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like trying to close the gap between the two parties and how to yeah. find common ground, and then it, it yeah. essentially a facility of transaction, right? I think that's what you're saying. Yeah. But is that then, is that your plan for guy to use CBDC, which means that they have to be fully registered with a bank or mm -hmm. a financial institution? I think it's a lot to ask for. It's like a husband going out for drinks until late night, but no phone call. You know, that's too much. <laughs> you know, so, so I mean, it, okay. it's just different value systems. You can't; it doesn't work. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can give. You, know, you can. You can at least call before midnight. You know, making sure yeah. that you know everyone knows everybody's safe. Everybody's yeah, exactly. okay. and, then, yeah, and, and then keep drinking. So <laughs> I, I think I think that's the difference between literally the philosophical different or cultural difference between E five and C five, and we do it both, and then we know, we just can and and we just hope that they can make a step forward, so that. Um, the world, both of the world makes sense again. I mean, you don't have to go to two or three different applications to do your daily stuff. Um, right. You can go to one apps to do everything. Right, right, cool. So uh, switching gears over to, uh, I guess you were talking a little bit about the NFTs and so forth. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what's your, I mean, you've got uh, Vitalik, uh, founder of ETH saying, you know, what's all these bored apes guys, uh, you know, $3 million is just like, basically just like gambling, right? And you've got the other side saying, you know, there's intrinsic value in there, um, yeah. so on and so forth. So, I mean, where's the sort of view, uh, art of you, or even your own personal views as far yeah. as the market's concerned, you know? I was about to say, we don't have a firm view, um, firm yeah. wild view. Um, right. <laughs> actually, you know why? Because some of us actually own it. I don't own it. Um, I don't have money to buy, and I, I missed the chance. <laughs> if, actually, if you have bought it, then you have more money to buy everything. So, um, but I missed it. Um, so, so for those who have it in our firm or within the ecosystem of Adrian's, um, they love it. It's worth it. <laughs> they should go higher um, right. because they own it. And for those who don't, they 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 did doubt. And as they continue to doubt, they go higher. So that's like, right. always the case in, in life. Um, my view is, at least my view on a. I mean, I, I well, I start out as a tr trader, and then I over time I I learned that maybe long term investing will be. Would be would be easier as a you know to make a ten bagger or five bagger, um, mm -hmm. trading right. trading if you want to make a two bagger or two three bagger, you gotta be pretty right damn right and sometimes leverage would help and uh, if you go the wrong way, hello, yeah if you go the wrong way then you may cry, so um, so for NFT I think if it becomes speculative, it will be harder to um to understand if it's short term it's harder to understand. So right. what we try to do now with NFT is try to, we try to create a long-term value for this. Um, we call it so-called utility value. So again, I should right. mention with, with, with full respect to everyone who um, who, who have done it um, in the GameFi way or pay to earn way, absolutely beautiful and um, they've done very well. We just thought that perhaps instead of issuing a token, um, can we be creative as well um, in a different way? Can we really create long-term utility values um, for an NFT? So if we can combine online and offline experience, it sounds very cheesy, but it's true. So imagine um, your wife's birthday today, you want to buy her something, an LV bat. I mean, you probably have to pop down to the LV shops and line up and you know, and don't get it and get shouted, you know. Um, or you can go to the NFT marketplace, buy the NFT for her. It's it's a lot, but at least you got you sort out the problems, you know. So, and so then, you're saying that, that that should be a discount, or is that the same? <laughs> but that depends on what what the NFT would do. So in a smart contract, so we actually work with artists and brand as we speak today. Um, we have signed up quite a lot of uh, brands, being the content mm -hmm. provider in general. We call them. Um, yeah, some NFT actually will allow you to redeem the physical. Sure. Tree. So now your trouble is gone. Send your NFT, NFT to. Um, to um to your wife and say hey 
you can pop right. down to the shops and then uh, exchange the handbag. That's cool. Problem solved. I mean, you don't have to go by yourself. You'll go. Um, the on offline experience is important. And then what if we can expand that into Hey, Eddie, I lost they fought you. with each other. So can you have Adidas, um, you know, socks and Nike boots, and then you know, uh, Puma, um, Puma, um, you know, football. So in the NFT world, you actually can, and then you can put on different um, so-called to NFT or tokens or images or content onto an image or body that you like. Maybe a Bob A. You know, Bob A. can can have football jerseys, right? You know, he can he can play football. So people, I think NFT allow people to create um, utility values. Um, and if you can combine that with real goods in life, um, and that's the challenging part because um, not many people in this world have retail experience or have experience in the physical world, um, especially the younger crypto natives generally, they, they spend most of their time in their own rooms and um, they probably don't want to go home. Uh, don't, they, want to go, they don't want to go out. So it's harder for them to, to build, I should say, very easy for them to build a, a virtual NFT marketplace, but much harder for them to build uh, online merch offline experience or um, NFT marketplace. So that's just one thing that uh, at least at Arta we feel extremely comfortable. Um, it's also part of our DNA as well, being able to deal with retails, understand customers, you know, look at, you know, for example, K11 is absolutely a beauty, um, successful projects. Can we expand that concept to some of the major global physical locations that mm -hmm. much with the online location, <coughs> online NFT. <coughs> so I think uh, that's pretty much how we see it. So, I'm, <coughs> sorry. Um, I was using the, the <coughs> sorry, uh, choking. Uh, I was using the handbag example because um, I think eventually if you just have an NFT that stay in your wallet over time, <coughs> the value would deteriorate. That's my view. I mean, not the firm mm. view, but my view. Mm. And I think that in, in a lot of even art pieces or even current NFT projects, but if that thing can be used somewhere for some reason, for certain utility, we think the value will stay. So that's, mm. that's different from a plagiarism concept, totally. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, right now everybody's just using it, you know, uh, lending, staking, et cetera. Uh, all those different NFTs inside of GameFi, you know, inside of the metaverse and so forth. So I think people are finding the utility inside of the context of these type of environments. But then is there a, a utility outside of it? Like, you know, something that is already pre-exists that, you know, we do day to day um, that we can leverage, right? Yeah. Well, I actually want to use one example. So when Julia was uh, introducing, was making the introduction, I was like, Hmm, this is fintech society, right? So we should have NFT memberships, right? You know, or at least, um, you know, fintech society can mean um, NFT for everyone um, for right. free so that everyone got a membership. But then if you think about it, if you really have a physical event and everyone come in to scan their wallets and so right. that, you know, they can get, can get in. I think it could be, plus towards the end of this talk, there, will be still be, there could still be people lining up, you know, because scanning, uh, scanning on NFTs could be slow sometimes. So I think the utility value of an NFT um, has to be quite um, specific. And it generally doesn't apply quite well in most of the processing that we actually explore. Um, the reason being that, you know, the current infrastructure in the world has been quite efficient. Um, a lot of, a lot, a lot of um, you know, if we go into a concert, I can, I can still do my paper ticket, so I can show my QR code, scan, go. Um, and that's memberships, right? So why do I need an NFT? Um, but if you can add values or memories, or if you can add contents to that to that tickets, which is an NFT tickets, and then you can, if you can trade it for money, um, for example, like I still remember uh, the first concert that I went with, you know, a girl that was memorable. You know, um, I was young. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a while back, you know, so <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm not young anymore. So it was cool. It was a good concert, right? This first movie that I watched with a girl, for example. Um, or the, I mean, or a singer that I love and the last concert that he went to, 
I mean, he, he actually he performed, and then you know, um, you know, it's the last one. So these have sentimental values, or even maybe you can create content around it. Maybe top, mm -hmm. you know, like ambient top shots where you can have 10, 15 seconds of the singer, or you know, mm -hmm. you and your girlfriends, you know, and then or some memorable things that can be attached to the NFT. Then you, right. the efficiency part become less important. The memory part, the value part, the utility part become much more important. Mm, yeah. That's what we're trying to create. You must create values and you must create, what do you call it? You know, the owners have to relate, relate to it. The buyer mm -hmm. has to relate to it. And, um, and that's what I think a lot of people struggle when they look at Bob Bay and say, uh, how do I relate to that? You know, it's a monkey, <laughs> it's an ape, you know? Yeah, what is this, you know? Is it art or is it fun? Is it, I don't know. So different people, I think that's where people see the disconnect. And doubt. Yeah. But if, right. if you if you can add memories and utility values, sentimental values, even you know, exchange for real goods, the 10 different ways that we think we can add values or to make that utility values to uh, NFT applications, then the value will stay. Right. Yeah. Cool. So um, you know, how are you guys uh, I guess yeah, NFT is kind of like the starting point as far as the metaverse is concerned, right? I mean you you're gonna put in put together uh, some sort of you know, uh, play inside of the NFTs. Yeah. You see a lot of linkage or, or are you creating, I mean, of course, uh, inside of the context of Adrian and he's made some investments inside of the, the metaverse and buying land yeah. and so forth. Is this kind of like the overarching strategy and you are a part of it? Uh, Art well, um, well, a lot of them is this uh, personal investment, which he has done super well. Um, he went in really early and um, for, I mean, he's a visionary. So um, I probably won't comment on his personal investments. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I represent the listed company, which he owns a um, majority. Uh, he's a 75% owner of the company and also the chairman of the board. So um, I guess for, for, from a company perspective, what we invest in um, would be blockchain infrastructures. Mm -hmm. So on a, on a strategic level, we've been speaking to quite a bit. Actually, we have made two announcements recently um, on technology developments. And we'll probably make more. Um, what we see is blockchain adoption has just begin, began. I mean, this is so new that um, if, I mean, it doesn't have to be immutable there to kind of like cool us, you know, crypto thing. Um, it can be even companies that we come up, came across, um, some in Korea, actually super exciting, Korea is super exciting uh, in terms of infrastructures. If a country wake up and say, we want to do metaverse, then the infrastructure needs to be revamped. Mm -hmm. Tiny infrastructures, from payment to, you know, um, you know the, the internet, basically the way that they set up internets, um, even to daily daily life, you know, the, the phones, the phones that the apps that you have, um, even the banking system needs to be around. So, it, we I mean, again, I mean, quite digress a little bit, but the way that we see investment is we are a company that provide blockchain service, and we invest into partners or friends or operating partners that provide um, tomorrow's technology, tomorrow's, tomorrow's infrastructures. And then it depends on which country. So uh, you, you know mainland very well um, and, and, and Hong Kong as well. Um, they have different requirements for infrastructures, things that, mm. you, can, things that you can't do. Um, right. Korea is a place where you actually can do a lot. Um, definitely a lot more than what you can do in China or even South, some, some, some Southeast Asian country. Right. That's where yeah. we, are, we are looking into it. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously inside of Neptune Digital, we're doing the open permission Ethereum inside of China on the BSN, um, you know, along with the team at Red Date. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities inside of that. What's your view in terms of China? I mean, you know, a lot of people are saying that metaverse in China is 8 trillion US dollars, right? I mean, it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's a massive opportunity. How do you guys play inside of that space? Well, um, we're involved, um, and obviously China rule is more stringent than the rest of the world. Uh, that's no doubt. Objectively, they are. Where we see opportunity is, it's a philosophical thing. Where do you think, um, do you think, are you okay with not being able to, um, you know, be an open participant of the blockchain? Are you, are you going to accept a permission blockchain where you have to first of all tell the government who you are? And when a token is created, it'll be the government creating it, not you. Um, would that be fine with you? If you're fine with that, then the market is quite similar, actually. And then mm -hmm. for NFT, they call it DTC, which you guys have, um, you know, um, BSN have, have 
African super world in in um, in in basically navigating towards the DDC market. Um, you guys have the technology and also the know-how. It's not NFT. It's DDC. Um, it's a certificate. It's not a token. They don't like to call it a token. They don't mm-hmm. want you and me, Neil and Addy, to issue a token. They want the right. government to issue a token. If you're cool with that, then it's the same thing in the end. You know. Right. So, so I think it's almost like I was using this example. I mean, it's it's funny. So, <clears throat> um, <laughs> you know, when you when you when you when you when you go to um, and I was in Chicago. Remember, um, you keep people a hug and you you kind of kiss sometimes even when you when you see friends and you know, it's very mm-hmm. affectionate. You never do that in China, you know. Imagine you walk into uh, Shanghai, you know, you meet a new friend and you immediately go give give the person a kiss or hug. You know, like, mm, some some do actually. I still do in Shanghai sometimes, but and some were like, uh, "What do you doing?" You know, if you respect that, you know, if you respect that, then it's okay. Um, I think it's the same for NFT and DDC. It's the same for permissionless blockchain and permission blockchain. In fact, in the application of finance, um, which is where the Chinese government uh, is keen and has approved it. Explicitly, um, techno- blockchain ap- application in finance. Again, it's proven that open permissions, open and permissionless blockchain is not suitable, at least for now, with the current state of technology. It's not as suitable as permission blockchain. Mm. And even permission blockchain is much slower than what we're doing now in, on the Shanghai Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. Mm. So I'll give you one example. Um, uh, I used to when I was younger, again, when my math was still good and uh, my hair wasn't, was, 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 uh, um, I was running high frequency trading uh, when I was younger uh, and arbitrage strategy. So um, our standard is every second, at least 5 million to 7 million trades should go through. And if you can't do that, you should, you should be out of business. Mm. And guess what? Um, permissionless blockchain depends on who you talk to. Some people say 50,000, some people say 100,000. Um, definitely no one so far has told me that they can do more than a million trade per second. Mm. It's the way the technology is structured and we won't go into detail today, but the existing infrastructure is actually as cool as it is. I mean, 7 million trade per second consistently without problems. The only mm. thing I hear is, okay, they do shut down on weekend, you know, okay, fine, you know, if they open on weekend, then would it be the same as your blockchain DeFi thing, you know, um, yeah. open Ethereum thing? I guess it is, you know, so um, it's a matter of making sure that people show up at work on, on a Sunday or Saturday. That's not too hard, you know. So um, I think the permission blockchain business, when it comes to application of finance in China, um, and CBDC being the, the pillar of it, because again, government wants to be able to issue tokens and no one else can issue tokens, <coughs> will, will be the games, the rule of games that you must observe. Mm. And if you observe that and respect that, then the rest is the same, pretty much. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I, I don't know if you have any specifics uh, inside of the GBA. If there's like a you know specific area that you're focused in for GBA, yeah. or is okay. it just kind of broader China market? Yeah, we do actually. Well, GBA is um, but when people talk about GBA, there are a few things that always come to mind. You know, first of all, you can go to Shenzhen quite easily. So proximity is actually just right next. So cross-border business is one thing that everyone think about. So I used to run cross-border business as well um, in financing investments. So um, money goes northbound from Hong Kong and money goes southbound from mainland cross-border business. Um, I've, somehow GBA does better, I think, than, than the rest of the country to Hong Kong or the rest of the country to Hong Kong. I mean, again, Shanghai and Beijing have done very well in other aspects as well, or different types of financial instruments. But in terms of cross-border, um, because of the proximity and the cultural, um, I mean, again, cultural similarity, cross-border business in the GBA is doing, um, is growing quite fast. You can tell, like, even the Hong Kong government and the, uh, the, 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 the major governments in, uh, major regional governments in, in the GBA have launched this um, traditional financing called um, Wealth Connect where um, there's a program specific for the GBA areas. I mean, there's no specific program between Hong Kong and Shanghai or Hong Kong to Beijing. So right. or Hong Kong do, for example. So um, cross-border business is one area where I think will be um, a holy grail for the crypto community. Or crypto community. But something that if we all work together, can, we can crack it. Um, the holy grail comes from the regulatory problems. So you have open and also cultural problem. You're open Ethereum in Hong Kong 
and then you have you know your BSN you know mm. permission, permission if we can't we can open permission Ethereum blockchain yeah, yeah blockchain. open permission uh, Ethereum yeah that's right yeah okay. so for the open. same Ethereum you have permissionless which is open or public and then in Hong Kong and then you have uh, open permission Ethereum in Shenzhen can we make sure they talk you know, <laughs> they inter interchangeable if you can mm. do that um, if we can do that I think um, it will be a huge business. Because yeah. In the end, I think the world will be bifurcated, will be will be split as always. The, I mean, especially private sector um, application of blockchain will be will stay private and permissions. Mm. So, um, and then the, the different requirement in the different countries. So, uh, one of our goal and where we see opportunity, and we'll start with GBA, is to make sure that we can cross chain. And then the right. second part is the legality of it. <laughs> and, you know, yes. and because in, in the real world, I mean, the law and regulations and the, mm -hmm. you know, the cross border money money payment law, the cross border investment law that you must. Right. Um, right. Whether you, you bring RMB from Hong to, from Shenzhen to Hong Kong or you, you bring a crypto to China, vice, vice versa, it doesn't matter. What matters is there's law and regulate, rules and regulation that one must should observe and must observe. Then um, technology may, may be, I mean, te the technological problem could be resolved, but the legal barrier is not there to break. So, so basically when you build a technology, which we're, what we're doing now is to make sure that we stay with the law, we observe fully on regulations, and then we innovate within that framework. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, let's transition to some of the questions that are coming in. I, I received a couple of di direct ones. Um, first one is, uh, are is crypto facilitating uh, a workaround on the Russian sanctions and Ukraine situation? Um, that's a little bit, uh, I guess, from a, maybe you can talk about it from a, a technical perspective or, you know, however you want to respond to that. Yeah, well, uh, I, I can speak for the firm. Um, I probably won't speak for my personal view, but I'll speak for the firm. So we license businesses. So it's the same question. I mean, if, 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 if a sanctioned person, or um, we got in general AML long compliant person come to us. So again, just to remind everyone, we have like one, two, four, six, nine, and one can do three and eight as well, incidentally, if you have incidental activity to it. And pretty much with all the license, right? And there's only one to 10, we have most of it already. So, mm -hmm. so we do have folks who come in out of the blue um, and say, hey, you know, I want to trade with you and then I want to, I want to use the service. But then um, mm -hmm. they are not AML compliance or not KYC, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, compliance. So um, question is the same: whether they trade crypto or not is irrelevant. It's mm -hmm. matter when you want to work with someone or deal with someone who are not compliance. So to answer the question, um, we probably won't be able to end anything down. Then mm -hmm. the person may get mad and say, like, you know, then that's not financial inclusion. And seriously, financial inclusion means I think that 1.7 billion people in the world. Um, under the SDG, the Sustainability Development Goal um, of the of the UN, um, financial inclusion um, is important. It's one of the 17, and 1.7 billion people is currently excluded per se. So maybe the sanctionless person maybe is one of the person who's been excluded. Our view is that, sorry, we we probably have to stay within the regulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Um, to the audience, I mean, if you have any other, if you have any questions, just feel free to drop it inside of the chat. Uh, another question that came in direct is, um, where is the connect between CBDCs, blockchain, and people pumping millions of savings into unregulated industry or unregulated activity? Where do you see the connection of all of these things? Uh, so unregulated regulated activity unregulated. probably means um, the DeFi, right? Correct. For now, yeah. for now. Right. the DeFi products, right? Yep, that's uh, right. Marginalizations. That's how we feel about it. I, I don't, I, I'm not sure it has to be CBDC, by the way. Um, I think in general, um, actually, I, this is just my view, but I mean, or the firm view. Overdrive, if, if you can choose between sleeping well and or worrying about your money um, or frustrate, getting frustrated with moving your money back to your bank from, from, from a DeFi exchange to... The traditional HSBC, I think over time people would go for the better options where you can sleep well and then all your money is in one wallet because mm. that's YC. 
I mean, just it's easy. I mean, if you buy a stocks, you have to do KYC anyway and AML. Why not for cryptos? Um, uh, most people that, I mean, at least for, actually, I, I should be scientific here. For most of the clients that we come across, 90% of them chose safety over everything. I mean, for them and for the clients. So for the install, no doubt, regulate it, please. If you're not regulated, I'm not talking to you. Um, because my client money is important. I'm, it has to be safe. And for those who are wealthy and professional, high net worth, super high net worth, they're happy to have about 5 to 10% of their money in something that could be unsafe, but that could make 10 bag of cryptos. Mm -hmm. So, or a crypto investment product. So, um, to answer that question, it doesn't have to close the gap. We don't think it has to close the gap. Some people may, ju may just have two wallets, you know, one in HSBC and one in Binance. Just totally work out. Um, but majority of the of the big boys or the, the regulated business or corporates that we deal with, whenever whoever has an institutional framework, um, they go for the regulated. Meaning, the marginalization comes in. Um, they if they have money with cryptos or I mean, in the, with the DeFi exchange, they probably have to pull them out or they probably don't have it now. And whenever they put a dollar into investment products, into DeFi investment products, then um, they will go for the regulated one, which is not a DeFi, DeFi, DeFi per se um, regulated product. So I'll give one example, CME, for example, um, offer regulated derivative on Bitcoins and Ethereum. So it used to be CB, CBO, and then uh, now it's CME. That product doesn't trade that much because the install hasn't adopted cryptos. But when, when, the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the when the when the when the installs institution adopt crypto because it's clients money and someone else's money and even your own money probably 90 percent of it you don't want it to be not too safe um or you want it to be regulated at least mm -hmm. and then you will go for cme for big big tickets right so, um and 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 we are bullish into those kind of exchanges for example regulated um derivative exchanges where you have the same experience same payout um much safer um except that it's not on blockchain. But you have the same experience, you have the same payout, why not? So do you really have to buy, buy your on blockchain to, to, to make yourself feel better? If you, if you insist, then it's okay, and have a wallet in, in Binance. But if you don't really have to insist, if you're happy with the payout itself, and you can stick well and feel safe, then you go for CME. Mm, right. Yeah. Uh, another question from Brian, actually. Uh, he says, uh, if you're going for a one-stop shop regulated approach, then would you would your main competitors be the more progressive FIs who also already have the licenses also? Who do you think are your main competitors right now? Yeah, well, uh, great question. So um, almost a question that we ask ourselves every day because, you know, naturally we're like, you know, why don't the traditional banks do the same thing? You know, they have hundred, a thousand more people than you, um, you know, a million, you know, times more resources than you. Um, if license is the problem, then they have licenses too, right? Um, why can't they do it? Our response is actually we probably can do it faster. <laughs> so in the technology world, it's not who has more money sometimes, it's who is more efficient um, and who has address client ping pong. Uh, one thing for sure is that um, I actually promised this session would be fun, but I, I, I don't know whether it's fun enough for everyone. But um, one thing for sure is that if you come to ATA, and have a wallet and uh, register again. Just just bear with us. Do one time KYC and AML, and make sure you pay for tax. You know, um, then then you will have an you know you will have access to a very um will be a pretty pretty fun environment, interactive and fun and immersive. So I'm not sure that if the banks can be ram the you know the applications to something that is you know truly immersive and and fun as fast as we do. Maybe they can do it in two year three year. Uh, we probably can do it in two to three months or six months. Um, mm. And then also, again, um, it's a huge market. So um, I actually don't see competition because it's so big that you don't almost have to compete. So um, I, I'm a little bit older than Brian, perhaps, in, the, in this respect. I mean, in terms of age. But I remember, um, I really remember um, when I was uh, younger. So everyone was like, okay. Um, so let's go to the stock market and buy some stocks, right? And I, I bought some stocks and, you know, and I was like, mm, let's, let's go, let's, let's trade quickly because you gotta be number one, trade first. You know, I was a trader when I was young. 
it's a trade question, you know. So Eddie, get it done, done. Great. Wait a minute, I didn't move the market. Why was I in a rush? I was too small to the market, the market was too big for me. So we did a math. If, if I mean, again, if, if the world does move into um, more digitalization, so digital asset, current market cap for um, Bitcoin and Ethereum or generally crypto assets around two trillion US dollar. The global amount of stocks and bonds, the global, the global market cap of stocks and bonds combined, again, forget about funds, forget about you know money or all this, is around 240 trillion US dollar, 240 versus two. So now the question is, if we can cryptolize or digitalize or tokenize the 240 and again, continue to work with the two, I mean, just mm -hmm. get you, you, you're a genius already. So it's a huge market, but to Brian's point, um, I think some people are more sticky with the traditional banks. So if the traditional banks can offer this service or this kind of experience, then, 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 then they will win the business, no doubt. But it's such a big market. We just want to make sure that it's fun um, and you can come on and, and contribute. And as you contribute, you can earn as well. Um, right. Not just play, not just spending time here, but you can all contribute as in putting up your products, your, your inventions, your creations. Mm -hmm. That will be a very unique proposition, hopefully. Yeah. Great. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think we're a little bit over time. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for, yeah, it, uh, time flew by. So hopefully everybody got a, a good uh, insights inside of the markets. Thank you very much to Eddie. I'm going to hand it back over to Julie. Uh, to close out the session. So really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Hey, no, thank, you. thank you, Neil. No, I thought great questions. I, when I wanted to ask one and then Neil, you, you covered, you covered it. And then I, I was going to ask a tricky reg one, but you actually covered that yourself, Eddie, because I did say someone's going to ask you about regulation, but you uh, <laughs> self volunteered some of that information already. So thanks for, yeah, thanks for your sharing today. Um, I'm really excited for this. I look forward to some more news coming through this year um, on your developments. Um, and hopefully, you know, please join us again at another another event, either as a panelist or, you know, feel free to to join the committee. Um, and we do we do this on a on a monthly basis. We'd love to hear your perspectives um, on the topics that we cover. But yeah, thanks for the audience. I mean, yeah, any final questions before we we wrap up? Uh Oh, actually, thank you, everyone. So feel free to contact me if you um, actually know some of you already on the list. Uh, feel free to contact. Um, we, we can pop up our drinks um, when things calm down a bit in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, we would we'll, we'll, we'll be lovely to work together. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Eddie. All right. Thanks, oh, thank everybody, you, everyone. for uh, joining the session. Really appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right.